want to talk about a certain type of financial abuse. Now, financial abuse can be very, very overt where obviously you have a partner withholding money from you. And that's what a lot of people think financial abuse is. But I want to share with you a real covert kind of financial abuse that also makes it very, very difficult to tell other people that this is a form of financial abuse. Because on the surface, it doesn't look like it. On the surface, it looks like you have a really, really generous partner. So this type of covert financial abuse is a partner that literally has everything in their name. Now, that could be your house. It could be the cars. It could be both your mobile phone. It could be your utility bills. It could be everything. But they are doing it under the guise of, don't you worry, I'll take care of it. I'll have it in my name. Now, on the surface, that seems really lovely, doesn't it? Like, oh, wow, you know, they're taking care of all of the bills. They'll even put your name on a credit card. They'll even put your name on a bank account. But they hold the purse strings of a main bank account. But they'll say things like, just ask if you need something. I'll give you the money. And very often they may give you the money as well. Or they may want receipts for things. And that's where it starts to get a bit darker and sinister then too. But equally, they may say, spend what you want. But they are always in control. Now, this is actually a form of financial abuse, having nothing in your name. Now, the reason why it's a form of financial abuse is because it's really isolating you from having a footprint actually in the financial world. Now, this may seem really nice if you have a partner that is doing this. But actually, long term, this is a form of financial abuse. And if this resonates with you at all, and you are listening to this thinking, oh my goodness, I don't have anything in my name, I really urge you to go and get even just a bank account in your name. Now, priority obviously here is safety. You want to keep this separate and private from your partner, or even if you feel safe enough to broach a conversation about having something in your name, like I'd really like my mobile phone in my name, or I'd really like a bank account in my name. Really start to see what the responses are back if you start to say that you want something in your name. Now, the reason why they don't want you to have anything in your name is they want to isolate you. They want to control you so that you feel like you can't leave anyway. Because how would you get credit? You don't have anything in your name. And again, because it looks like on the surface, you have this caring partner who's super generous with money. How can you go and tell somebody? How can you go and say to maybe your friend or a family member and actually say to them, I think my partner is financially abusing me. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, they're paying for everything and I have nothing in my name. Because actually that might be, well, what's wrong with that? That's really, really nice. And this is where we really need to understand the intricacies and the complexities of domestic and narcissistic abuse. And in this case, financial abuse. You know, financial abuse isn't just withholding money. Financial abuse can be giving you an abundance of money, but wanting receipts, wanting everything taken care of, and nothing in your name. It's all about power. It's all about control and it's all about isolating you so you become totally reliant on the narcissist so you won't ever leave. You won't have a choice but to stay because if you left, if you have children, how would you survive? How would you have something in your name? And if you are older, maybe in your 50s or 60s and maybe your children have left home, how can you restart your credit? Well, let me tell you that you can. And if you really feel like this is you in this situation, there's a couple of things I really want you to think about. One, safety is the priority. The second one is maybe look around for any local domestic abuse charities that you have in your area and maybe even pop in and go and see them. I'd also really consider talking to some friends and family members that you can trust. And also please feel free, come and join my free and private secure Facebook group. So I just wanted to talk to you about this form of financial abuse. It's not really talked about very much, but it really, really is a serious matter. 
because it can leave you vulnerable and it can leave you isolated as well. I'd love to know if you can relate to this style of covert financial abuse. 